Well, Kane Corns is our regular on the panel and he drove across the border on the weekend before it shut. Think about that for a moment, to base himself in Victoria in the weeks ahead as he continues his employment. And Kane, as we welcome you in, uh, the stress and anxiety that's going through the competition. Uh, a lot of people would be dealing with these issues at the best of times, let alone now. How, how do you see this being something they can manage in the months ahead? We know how susceptible these players are to mental health issues, Hachi. The AFL Players Association have spoken about it before, as is the rest of society in their age bracket and demographic. But you think about this. These are players that this is all they've ever known. They've come straight from school, some of them from interstate, put in with a host family. They get a buzzer alert where they need to be and when they get their meals prepared for them, their protein shakes done. Some of the players have their bills paid for them, Hutchie. This is all gone as they know it right now. The world that they've known is gone. They've been paid on time. What are they going to get paid? The uncertainty of that. So my concern is that there are a lot of players susceptible to really spiralling down a really dark black hole. Have you spoken to any of your old Port Adelaide teammates in recent days? Other than my brother, um, Carol, I haven't spoken to any players yet and clearly like everyone in the industry he's an assistant coach right now he's in the dark about that and your concern foremost is is as a brother and not worried about the AFL side of things but you know for me and, and putting myself in the situation of the players I was I was someone who really struggled with mental health when I was playing and and had to take medications to get you through those types of things so if that was me in their situation the unknown of will I ever play this game this is all I've ever known since I was five years of age and all I've ever wanted to do being taken away through no fault of their own I'd be really struggling with it. And if you don't mind me asking, because we're all sitting here tonight, uncertain about our own futures as well, how are you going yourself? Do you feel anxious? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm like everyone. I think Hutchie summed it up pretty well. We are lucky to be in the position that we are in and, and still working tonight, whereas some people had that taken away from them today. So it really is a day-by-day -day aspect, but clearly the whole AFL industry has been affected. And me personally and everyone else is, is going to feel it for, for a while. And the specifics of your situation, Ken, you, you drove over not, not knowing your own state was going to shut its borders. You, you're still in Melbourne and you're deciding to stay. Um, just take us through that, please. <laughs> well, is it weird that I Skyped my dog last night, Damo? <laughs> like, these are the things I feel like I'm, yeah, going, that is. I'm going insane. <laughs> but the kids are on Skype. Uh, Lucy's an absolute superstar. She's you know trying to deal with her own business issues at the moment. It's, it's just what you do to to get through the situation, um, you know, the world supported and at some point I'll get back and, and isolate myself for 14 days like the Port Adelaide players are doing right now and, and we'll get through it. And Kane mentioned the borders, which have become such a part of this, right? There was the Northern Territory border, then the South Australian border. Uh, the borders literally closed in on all of the sports that were still hanging on and A-League, uh, the last to go tonight. Peter Volandis was staunch, Caro, and you, had a, you used him as your arrow last week. He reluctantly, uh, the NRL put their hand up at 5.15 tonight and I, 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 I don't agree. Rem, with this. Reminiscent of Paul Little and what they did with the Grand Prix two weeks ago, it's, we're seeing it with the International Olympic Committee who have just taken so long to see reality. I, I, I couldn't believe the NRL situation. And the attempt to try and get everyone in the one place, I think, was probably you know, two, three weeks ago for them, wasn't it, given they got the New South Wales-Queensland thing to overcome. But uh, it was literally the borders that, that got everyone in the end. And I, I think the players who were made to travel, the AFL players who were made to travel over the last weekend were really anxious about that, and yeah. I don't blame them. Yeah, they were. And, and as we know, there was a, about a 15% uh, of the player group that was reluctant to play any matches at all, and the ones that had to travel were, were um, even more so. It was a 12% vote, I think, wasn't it originally, and it got worse by, yeah. by the weekend. Uh, Chad Wingard, Kane, you've got some views on this. Yeah, I just was, I thought he summed it up as best as any player that I've heard when he said this when he was asked whether he would return home to South Australia. Honestly, I don't, I, I love my family, but I, I want what's safer for them. I don't want to see my grandma, um, my old man, because obviously the Indigenous um, population are more susceptible to it. Um, I want to make sure that they're safe. My dad's got obviously uh, diabetes, and so those guys are a lot more susceptible to getting really sick from this. So I, I don't want to go home. I want to make sure that I'm isolated that they're isolated and that they've got the best chance to get through this without putting them at risk further. Especially with the rules, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what they're putting in place. Yeah. They're shutting the borders or whatnot. But, um, no, I definitely won't be seeing family if it's going to put them at risk. No way. 
And it's big from Chad Wingard. He also tweeted this, don't wait till it affects someone you know till you change and do the right thing. Don't be selfish. Put yourself in the shoes of the vulnerable. How would you feel if you saw someone gambling with your life and livelihood? Stay safe and spread the love. That's on the back of his uh, coach, Alistair Clarkson, and his strong comments yesterday. So Hawthorne at the forefront of social distancing and, and the measures that we are all taking now. You talk about Hawthorne and you talk about smart decisions and obviously one was the AFL to employ mental health officers and two very senior people led by Kate Hall who were going to be looking after the players. You look at the decision to buy Marvel Stadium, that is going to... as you save, say, Want to save sport and, in Australia. And the Hawthorne Football Club, whether they ever yeah. move out to Dingley, they've got a really good asset there themselves that maybe they can use at some point. So all if the they club... get the funding for it, though, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't think they'll ever... I don't think that might ever happen, but they have got they, the land. They do. Hachi, take us through what you mean by that might have saved the sport, the purchase of Marvel Stadium by the AFL. Well, it's a, what, a $2 billion minimum asset. I don't know the exact number, but it'd be no less than $2 billion, and the AFL own it, and it has always been its monster insurance policy. It's rainy day and, well, guess what? It's raining hard. Um, and it's so, so it's getting, a leverage for the banks well, on, yeah, on the I mean, guarantees. It's the only thing they can borrow against. I, I can't... You compare it to the NRL. What have they got? The club pokies and the bundle up a few assets. Like, it's it's a fixed asset that would... I think will... We'll, AFL will get out of this better and quicker than most other winter sports. The summer sports are a little less affected at the moment, albeit will will be. So, Kane, just to close off, if you do go home to see your family, you'll all have to quarantine for two weeks. Is that correct? Yes. That, that, as far as I know, I haven't looked into it too closely, but Lucy tells me I'll be stuck in the house for 14 days with the kids. I don't know when that day will arrive. It may be a couple of weeks, two or three weeks away. But, uh, Caro, I'm safe. They're safe and we're all safe and that's all that matters. Go and FaceTime them before bed if you can <laughs> and get up and do the radio in the morning if you can too. Thanks again, Kane, <laughs> from SNSA in South Australia. Thanks for joining us. Oh. Look after yourself and uh, we appreciate your sacrifices tonight. I'm coming back, Hutch. I'm on the show for good call, bad call. Don't get rid of oh, me Of course yet. you are. Sorry, Come you on. are. And so is Lordo. I've wrapped yeah. you both up prematurely. <laughs>